Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, ever tried mouflon? No, it doesn't taste like chicken. Well, Kai is working hard over a hot griddle. In news, a security x-ray reveals all. That man should really clean his barrels. First night vision action. Roy's out foxing with his rebarreled 22250 with the Drone Pro 10 times on top. <laughs> Roy's been having some work done. We're not talking liposuction or colonic irrigation, but he has been rebored. His 22250 is sporting a brand new barrel, lovingly prepared by Paddy at Dane & Co. It's part of an extensive overhaul of hardware with a new bespoke rifle built for Mr Lupton, but more about this long-reaching 6.5x47 at a later date. There's not much left of the original rifle, but it's an old favourite of Roy's, and to add the finishing touches, he has been sent a Picatinny rail to seat the Drone Pro 10 times from Night Vision Gear UK. We've got the rifle back from Paddy's. I phoned up uh, the guys at Tier 1, and I said that we needed a zero MOA Picatinny rail. Arrived in the post the next day, and literally just did the, undid four screws on the, the top of the Tika, put it on, they're on there, that's not going to shift. And now I've got the Drone Pro has arrived in the post and I cannot wait to get this out and have a go with it. And it should just simply be, I think, a case of slotting it on. Do the catches up. Excellent, and away we go. So you can't get much more simple than that. I do like simple. It suits my personality. Of course, the plan was to zero the drone in daylight, but after he's fed the birds and played with the M25 on a Friday night, we arrive at Crows two hours late. We have to zero the drone in darkness. We've got a box out into the gloom there somewhere about 100 yards. I want to zero at about an inch high at 100 yards, so we should be pretty much uh, set to shoot out to about 250. So uh, hopefully we'll account for a couple of three foxes. We've got a lawmate recorder that we're going to put onto it tonight as well so you should be able to see through the scope and see what we can do. We've got Andy with us as well tonight so he's come out to uh, to play. We are on uh, on Andy's ground so it should be a bit of a giggle and uh, I'm sure David is going to get a hell of a lot of ribbing over the next couple of hours. So we've got to come down and to the left. As I say we want to be about there. Roy works his way through the zeroing, moving the crosshairs to the point where the shots have landed. So we need to adjust over to the right and up. So we're going to press Sorry, button two on the right hand side and button one on the top and that should take us a little bit closer. So we'll have a go at that. We're not using the specific illuminator for this unit and the reason for that was unfortunately David left it on the kitchen table as we were doing a bit of film before we came out. So we've had to uh, use a, another uh, illuminator for tonight and uh, we're gonna have to rely on that. We will be coming back out and using the infrared illuminator that uh, the Drone Pro 10 comes with. But for tonight, because uh, we have made a bit of a faux pas, we're just gonna have to use an external light source. One thing Andy notices when looking back at Roy crouched behind the rifle is how foxy Roy looks. That sounds wrong, but you know what I mean. Just shone the lamp back up the field to where we just come from. Uh, Roy's left his rifle up the field. Placing the it is unloaded, bolts up. So for anyone sees it, I've just shone the light up there and it just shows you how you've got to be so careful. Because you look at that. So that's why you never shoot it. Shoot it unless you know what you're shooting at. Time for some foxing. Crow hasn't touched the field since harvest, so he's confident we will get some customers. He's not wrong. The first one shies off, but there are plenty more about. We had six foxes coming in from different angles and it really is tricky um, in a situation like that because you've got to try and pick your fox and hope that they stop but um, with the first shot the others went and then with the, the second shot 
Um, we had another few coming in and again, they, uh, they cleared the field, um, which is a shame. Second one was absolutely beautiful. I started following that with no illumination whatsoever. I mean, it's quite a bright night anyway. We've got a bit of a moon. Um, and you could see with no illumination at all, or no external illumination, I could, I could have shot the fox quite easily. It was just tracking across there. Um, and then Andy put the, uh, the illumination on it. Um, it shone up beautifully there and fantastic clarity of picture. So I really, really do like this unit so far. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this over the next uh, few weeks. Our next fox works its way up the field through the bales, then turns tail and runs, only for Roy to make the most of a second's hesitation. Probably just about 200, maybe a little bit further off than that, um, and just stopped for a second, and so we managed to, to shoot him there. So, you know, very, very good. Again, thoroughly impressed with the scope. Um, you know, that's uh, to do 200 straight off, and we've only been uh, messing about with it for the first time. I, I don't think we can go too far wrong. The team are working well this evening, though. Roy and Crow feel that they should be the ones fronting a series on game cooking. Yeah, Kyle probably come out and put uh, the bushes in there. I expect we cook that. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and put it in a baguette. Uh, that would look lovely in a yeah, baguette, wouldn't it? Bit of lettuce around, oh. bit of tomato, yeah. bit of mayonnaise, barbecue oh, sauce. Don't you get me going? Barbecue sauce. There's always time for one more fox, and the last field gives us two. The first, Roy shoots without additional illumination, thanks to the near full moon. The second is with. When you think that we've shot foxes from, I don't know, 30 yards out to 200 yards, we zeroed it in the dark with fumbly fingers. Yeah, from what I've seen, incredibly easy to use. It is idiot proof because we just to prove that two idiots can take it out and use it. And the, the results that we've had so far have been brilliant. And again, I'm, uh, I'm chuffed with having my 22-250 back. It's so nice having, uh, having that back and having a play, so I'll, uh, I'll have to thank Paddy for that one again. It was a very successful night's foxing with a new rifle and new technology, giving Roy even more of an edge as if he needed it. For more information about the Drone Pro 10 times, go to nightvisiongear.co.uk and if you want a new rifle or to give one a new lease of life, give Paddy a shout at customrifle.co.uk or on Facebook. Team Lupton and Crow coming together there, all the children, as David calls them, best not sit them together in class. Now from the bad boys in the back row to the teacher's pet, it is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Someone has had a positive experience flying with a gun through a British airport. It was viewer Andrew Norden who spotted that Air Canada had banned itself from carrying African big game trophies, even though it didn't fly to Africa. Andrew follows that up with this photograph. He took his gun through Heathrow on British Airways, and the lady at security pointed out the lead fouling, which meant he wasn't cleaning it properly. The autumn hunting season is now underway in Malta. Nowhere near as good as the spring hunting season, which British antis including Bill Oddy and Chris Packham tried to ban, Maltese hunters celebrated it by firing their traditional salute during the Feast of St Julian at the end of August. A new report shows that hunters in Malta spend an average of €2,300 each on their sport. A green councillor has come out as a big game hunter. Ben Whiteman posted pictures of himself on social media next to two dead antelopes, a warthog, an ostrich, wildebeest and a zebra. Mr Whiteman represented the Green Party at Kirkburton Parish Council near Huddersfield, West Yorkshire, and lost his seat in May. Do you fancy backing a good cause and getting something in return? The gunmakers company Charitable Trust is offering 22 lots in its online auction, including dinner at your house cooked by Albert Roux and by the chairman of the gunmakers Charitable Trust, Lord Sharman OBE. Other lots include shooting and visits to top gunmakers in the UK and abroad. Visit Bitly GCCT auction. The government of the state of Texas is holding a prize draw for some deer stalking. Texas Parks and Wildlife is offering a grand slam of four separate Texas big game hunts. Desert bighorn sheep, white-tailed deer, pronghorn and desert mule deer to one lucky winner. Just $9 per ticket, 
go to tpwd.texas.gov. The fallout from Cecil the Lion has led to a harsh judgment for a man who was baiting bears in the USA. 63-year-old Jimmy Harrison organised the shooting of nine bears over a five-year period. Laying baits for bears is illegal in the state of Montana. He was fined $9,000 and given a 10-year suspended jail sentence and banned from hunting for life. And finally, you saw the news coverage. You bought the T-shirt and now here's the Halloween costume. Two companies have come up with Halloween tributes to Cecil. A laundry company has made a sexy Cecil Halloween costume to capitalise on the death of the noble beast. Buy it from yandy.com for the cat in your life for $118.20. Meanwhile, this one from costumish.com allows you to dress up as Walter Palmer, the dentist who shot the lion, including head. A snip at $139.99. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now a word or six from our viewers. It's Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, just bag, bag yourself a club. Not bad in 10 minutes. Hello Charlie. Uh, Scott and Klaus here. Visiting Scotland from Denmark. Beautiful day, it doesn't look like Scotland. Shooting pigeons. Hello Charlie. Very dirty man here. Just a little bit of lap on. <laughs> Good luck. Hello Charlie. Got a change of pace this morning. Decoying wood pigeons with an air rifle and a springer at that. I've got about 26 birds here, so it's been a great morning. Hi Charlie. Simple Simon here. Uh, with the rifle and uh, Poppy the dog. Just hoping I can get a nice fallow book to take over the table. Hello Charlie and Mr. Fermanaman here again, out on the pigeons and crows. Ten in the bag so far, I've only been out about an hour and a half and really enjoying the sunshine. Charlie, here's a pair of hairs I got with my uh, Hush Power 410. Hello Charlie, this is David from Insight and then I'm out here stocking at the minute so that I see just as a female stop we've got one buck already. Hello Charlie, just out pigeon shooting with my little boy here Luke on the bean stubble trying to catch up with a few. Seven for seven isn't it? I can settle for that. Hello Charlie. That's it, please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. I say it every week, keep them coming, keep them entertaining. Thank you for sending them in. Now, last week, Kai Ap Brin had the lucky chance to go to Hungary after Mouflon. You can get Mouflon meat online if you don't have the lucky chance to go to Hungary yourself. So you don't need to go hungry. Kai Ap Brin is cooking up a storm with a hint of Welsh and a twist of Hungarian. I was very privileged to be able to shoot my first mouflon in Hungary a little while ago. Luckily, companies like Kezi are able to source these and get delivered straight to your door. Today, we're going to be making some fantastic mouflon burgers. I'll be using like cumin, coriander, ginger, and other spices in with it, mixed together to make these beautiful patties we could have for our dinner tonight. Oh crap. When you're doing burgers at home, a big fault that some people do is when they're cutting their onions, the onions are quite big chunks, and that breaks the kind of that breaks the structure of the burger and makes it a bit loose. So the idea is to chop things as finely as you can. You don't get don't put too many big bits in there, so it holds it tighter. Also, you can use egg to bind. I don't. I just make sure there's enough liquid in there for it to bind. Or if you patty them up and put them in the fridge and cool them down, that holds their shape a lot better as well. We've got mouflon mint here in the bowl, some steak mints. Now mouflon is a type of wild sheep, so we're kind of trying to go with some lamb style spices and, and ingredients for this Moroccan lamb. So we've got mint sauce, just because I'm Welsh, can't have enough. 
two teaspoons of mint sauce there, half a teaspoon of coriander, quarter of a teaspoon of cumin, a pinch of cayenne, two teaspoons of tomato puree, ginger. Put some ginger in. We're gonna chop this up a bit fine. Now when I did try mouflon in Hungary, I was quite surprised. It wasn't a strong taste at all. And there was a little element of lamb there, but really it reminded me a lot of venison, but it was absolutely delicious. A teaspoon of honey. Mix that in. And of course, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. So for our buns for this Mouflon burger, I thought we'd spice up a bit and make something a bit different. So I went to the local shop and got a plain white soft bat. Now, in the Dutch oven itself, we put two wooden, two wooden sticks at the bottom and rested the bun on, glazed it with a bit of egg and a sprinkle of paprika, and it turned out to be really, really good. I've got to be honest with you, it's the first time I've ever done this, this type of burger with these spices. It's a bit of a gamble, but it's paid off. It's absolutely delicious. Tastes a little bit of ginger, coriander, a bit of cumin. Not too much, not too overpowering, and a little bit of mint that just goes through it. And when you bun with a bit of tzatziki and, a, and some fresh lettuce and tomato, oh, it's got to be a winner. So this is my Mouflon burger. Look at that, looks amazing. That is delicious. You've got to try this. If you haven't got Mouflon, try it with lamb, you can try it with venison. But it's well worth a go. For more information about the Ronnie Sunshine's range of cookware, go to ronniesunshines.com. And if you fancy something a bit exotic for a change, why not have a look at Kezzy's website, kezzyfood.co.uk. Looks delicious, Kai. Now, Hunt & Cook is sponsored by Zawa Rifles and Shooter King Clothing. And in the run-up to the Midland Game Fair on the 19th and 20th of September 2015, in Shropshire, Shooter King is running a competition with a prize pot of £600 worth of clothing. Two complete shooting outfits. To be in with the chance to win, all you have to do is go to the Shooter King Europe Facebook page and like and share the competition. And while you're doing that, you can hear me burbling in the background as I take you from Europe to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube with Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. I have concealed three top tips in this week's showcase. Top tip number one, how to attract deer with a tarsal gland. Whoa, forget the fatal attraction, what's tarsal? Find out here how and where to remove the tarsal gland of a deer during the rut and use it as a cover scent or an attractant. Byron Pace and his brother have started their own production company, Pace Brothers, obviously leading to unfair comparisons with the department store in Are You Being Served? Anyway, young Mr. Pace makes and stars in this beautiful film, The Untold Story, driven grouse shooting, Mrs. Slocum. This is beautiful. Marius Vigneault is a French wildfowler and he sends me his roundup of last season, just in time for this season. Now for top tip number two, a bit late for the 2015 row rut of Wie baue ich einen Blatter? How to make a roe deer call is a tutorial in German, but Felix from Austria, who both made it and sent it to me, speaks good English, so comment as you watch it and he will answer your questions. You have plenty of time to comment, it's half an hour long. Always Outdoors sent in this one ages ago, sorry, Always Outdoors, build as squirrel hunting, it starts as turkey hunting, but it really is about squirrels. In Oklahoma, the squirrel season opens on the 15th of May. Most other places in the US it opens in the autumn, so good timing for me anyway. Let's end on vermin. Hunter Eddie sends his guest appearance on Get Foxed TV crops down in Cambridgeshire, foxing with the hunters. They are on a mixed bag of permissions from stubble fields to golf courses. For how they do it in the USA with coyotes, go prone with O'Neill Ops in predator hunting, suppressed isolate. Team Ops detach another alpha from the cover of the shadows. Never stop being American guys. Finally it's top tip number three. Ever wondered how New Zealanders get away with hunting wild boar with dogs and knives? Well here is one reason on the excellent Clay Tall Stories channel. When encountering fellow pig hunters in the bush
ambush. If you are only armed with a knife, you can't do them any damage. Good point well made. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you don't like those, how about this? In this month's club digweed, George is on the skeet layout at EJ Churchill offering ground managing director Rob Fennick and keen game shot Kerwin Jones a bit of a tune up. I'm down here with a Welshman and a Yorkshireman, so quite what combination that's going to throw up, I've no idea. In half a dozen targets, George identifies where the guys need work. Beautiful shot. And he looks a hell of a lot smoother already. Yeah. You nearly look as smooth as me. Nearly. One shoots with the left shoulder high, the other with the right. This together with how they set up for the target is broken down and explained the by the 26 that, times man. world champion. You've got to stay there. It's all on Club Digweed. Go to georgedigweed.com to see how to join and watch the show. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe or go to our website where you'll notice we have the decorators in. You can still click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we will constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs>